Let's learn how to work with methods in a class. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project. And I'll call this one Method Me. You can call it whatever you want. And it's going to be a C Sharp Console App.NET Framework. Click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new class. So I'm going to come over to the project itself, right mouse click, Add Class. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new class called Student. And go ahead to student.cs and we'll add. Makes a new class for us. I'm going to go ahead and create some attributes. I'm going to make them private. And we'll do a private string um, name and a private double GPA. Add one more, I'll do a private int age. So I have three attributes. Now that I have those three attributes, I'm going to go ahead and write a method to access those attributes. Now to write a method, the first thing you do is you specify the scope. Scope of a method could be public, protected. Um, there's other uh, scope you're going to learn later on, but we'll go ahead and say public because I want it to be visible everywhere. The method then has to say, what do you want to give back if you ever run this? Now you might ask yourself, what does that mean? I don't want to give something back. Well, let's take a look at Excel. In Excel, if I had a spreadsheet and I had some numbers in here, whatever these numbers are, and then right there I said equals average parenthesis A1, comma A2, comma A3, comma A4 parenthesis and I stored that in the cell and I pressed enter, it would go and calculate those four values, make an average of them, and store it right there. Well, this average method in Excel is almost like doing a function call. We're saying go call this function or this method and pass those parameters to it. So the values in A1, A2, A3, and A4 are now sent to whoever wrote the average function in Excel and it uses those values and then it returns whatever it calculated back to this area. That's the way method works. So when we get back over here to our video we could say I want to make a method to go and get the name. I could say there's my method get name. Now the whole purpose of this get name is to retrieve the name attribute. The way you retrieve it is you say the word return name, semicolon. The other thing you have to do is you have to say, okay, here's my return value, but what am I actually going to try to return? I need to return the name, which is the data type string. So the second position of writing my method is what data type do you return? That matches this string and a string. The parentheses say, I don't receive anything. I don't need anything in order to get my job done. Let's write another method. And this method, let's say public set name. And in set name, I actually want to go and receive a value that, that the user sends me, the software developer sends me, and I want to assign that to the name attribute. So I'm going to say string s value. I could have called that anything. And then I'll say name is equal to whatever I received as a parameter. Second position says, what are you returning? Well, we're not returning anything. So you put the word void. So this is called a getter or accessor. And this is called a setter or a mutator. Getters go and get values. Setters receive something and change values. Usually on a setter, you don't return anything. On a getter, you usually don't receive anything, and you do return something. Now, what if we had something else? Let's say we, we have their age there, and we have their GPA, and I wanted to receive maybe multiple values. I could write a method that receives more than one value. We'll say public void load data. I'm going to make it as 
lowercase load data. And in this case, I want to see, receive more than one value. I want to receive the age and the GPA. So I could say int I age or I num. You can call it anything you want. It doesn't matter. Because when you do this, this actually creates a variable that lives as long as the method is running. Once the method is over, that variable dies. And I could have another variable here called D value. And whatever I receive, I want to say age is equal to I num and B value is equal to, whoops, sorry about that, GPA is equal to D value. So this now says if I ever call this method, it expects two different values to be passed to it. I'll take the first value and assign it to age and the second value and assign it to GPA. Now I'm not returning anything, I could, but in this case I don't really want to do that. I just want to receive numbers and load it up. So how could I actually use this code in a program? Well, let's come over here to our program. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a variable of type student. I'll call it student o student equals new student. This is the constructor. This makes the object. We store the object to there, and it better be of type student. Now I can say o stud dot set name parenthesis Greg that will now store Greg to or it passes Greg to the method set name meaning over here Greg now goes into this method and Greg goes into s value and then we take the s value and store it to the name attribute for that object. Once again, over here we said call the method set, set name for the object, pass Greg to it. So Greg goes into that variable, which is string, and then we take the value of Greg and store it to the name attribute. So let's go ahead and do ostude.load data. And remember, load data, if we were looking at it, says that it's going to require two different parameters. So there's a comma there. The first parameter is of type int. The second parameter is a double. The first parameter will go into that variable. The second parameter will go into that variable. And then we assign each of those variables to the attribute. So over here, I could say age 54 and GPA. 4.0, because that's what I really wish I was. 4.0. So when we run this now, 54 will go into inum, 4.0 will go into d value, and then we'll assign each of those to those attributes for that specific object. So that's how you could write a method and pass more than one parameter to it, and then load those parameters up into whatever you want to do. What if we wanted to display all of the data by using a method? We could say public void display data. And maybe all we want to do in this method is console.writeLine. And we could say let's write the name plus a space plus the age plus a space plus the GPA. Now in this case, I'm sort of returning something, but I'm not. I said I'm not returning, or there's not a return statement. This one just simply prints something out. So I could come over here and say, display data parenthesis, parenthesis. And that would now display the information on the screen. Let me go ahead and do a console.readLine to pause this, and let's run it and just see what happens. So we should see output being Greg 54 and 4.0. And why is that? Because we called the method display data, which says go display that information. Now that we have that information, and that's working so far, what if instead of doing a console.write line, I simply just wanted to return the data back, and then I could display it. I could say public string, 
return data or whatever you want to call it. And now instead of doing that console.write line, I could have just said return that string. And then over my program, I could have just said console.write line parenthesis the object dot return data. And then that method would come over to here to return data, grab the information, make a string out of it, and send it back wherever it came from, which is right here, and then we display that information. So that's how you write methods. You specify the scope, the return type, the name of the method, and any parameters that are coming in. If you have a return type, then you have to have a return. If you're not returning anything, you say void. You have to specify parameters and to specify the data attribute for the parameter. And if you have more than one parameter, you separate them with a comma. Methods do work. And methods are a great way to encapsulate and make your, your program more logical. Um, remember, once again, by setting these attributes as private, the only way to get to those attributes is through, me through methods. And usually we write getter methods and setter methods, or accessors and mutators. And those are methods.